with Nicole Masters, who wrote For the Love of Soil, the book that changed our farming here at Althorpe, and who really inspired this big shift. We decided to go cold turkey, which I only found out after you got here you thought was a terrible idea. Oh, I'm not saying it's a terrible idea. You've done it. You didn't fall flat on your face. So, well, um, it's very new. So there may be some falling flat on our face. We decided um, that we were just going to rip the Band-Aid off. Oh, yeah. You know, first of all, Charles and I are quite impatient. So describe that. So you're using nitrogen fertilizers, we were herbicides, using fungicides. Every fungicides. possible mm. icky thing that exists was on our field. You basically take the glyphosate, spray the whole field to kill everything. Yeah, which and is then three to four liters a hectare. Oh my God. To spray it off. It's crazy. Yeah, it is, it is horrible stuff. I think we had 47 different ingredients on one field. I'm and all of them are good food additives, kidding. I'm sure. Kidding. <laughs> 47 on one field. Oh. I mean, it was sort of when in doubt, chuck it on. You know, 47 inputs on a field. Who's making money doing that? And then what's not getting us. into the food chain not us. and the water? I can tell that's you that's the true. other thing. So we made no money in farming in the last 10 years, like literally nothing. Yeah. The whole system needs to change. We're so excited to be on this journey with you and we're learning so much. This white means it was never fixing nitrogen. Okay. You know, walking around the park and digging holes for an hour, we were like, oh my gosh, this is just so much information. And I think really also, we knew enough, we could look at the landscape and mm. go, this isn't right. Mm -hmm. Chemicals are gonna stick to some of this organic material in the clay. It smells good, pass it along. I don't really like getting dirt under my nail. Soil. I, yeah, okay. Soil. Soil. <laughs> I'll get some gloves. This is telling you that nutrient density isn't optimal. Not being a farmer, mm -hmm. there was a lot of your book that kind of went quite over my head. Mm. But it was still, I could still as a lay person, and that's why I, you know, I tell all my friends who are not farmers that I think this book is actually relevant to everybody. Oh. If you eat food. Mm -hmm. If you eat food. If you eat food, you yeah, should probably should read, read this book. <laughs> yeah, which sort of, you know, Broad audience. Yeah, it's like everything's just run out of flavor. Yep. And so we add all these sauces. We do the American diet. We'll just chuck some ketchup on it. You'll yep. be good. Yeah. <laughs> Yuck. And everybody's got cancer yes. or autoimmune stuff. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, the rates of that at this point are just astronomical. And we wonder why, if we're putting all of these terrible substances on our food mm -hmm. and in our water, mm -hmm. you know, it's not surprising really that we've ended up with this mess. No. I did not go to school to mm -hmm. learn how to be a farmer mm -hmm. or understand agriculture, but what's really been surprising to me is that people who have, have not been taught this mm -hmm. basic stuff. What no. have they been taught exactly? A little bit like what people are learning when they study medicine. You're learning how to deal with sickness. You're not learning how to, to generate health looking at symptoms instead of root cause. Exactly. You know what I think is most exciting to me is that when I talk to the farmers and ask them what they think about it, they all say the same thing, which is, well, something's got to shift. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I just have to say, I think farmers are the most hardworking people mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Like almost every problem, we tend to blame the person yep. who, who is absolutely the least responsible. Farmers in the way that they're farming now is a product of a lot of different things of which they had no control yes. for the most part. It's a little like the system was actually setting people up to stop being creative, to yep. stop thinking, to just do as you're told, shut down all of that creation and that joy that, that farming really brings. And that means that young people don't want to return to it because one, you, your parents are exhausted, they're not making any money, it's really boring. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to be engaged in that? And yeah. the community at whole making you wrong because yeah. you're polluting and yeah. you've got animals that are farting. It's been so fun to just watch you know, our team's eyes as mm. we were walking in that field with the black grass, which is like the thing, yeah. right? The solution forever has been glyphosate. I have a dear friend who's a neighbor who's like, you will not be able to farm without glyphosate in Northamptonshire because we have black grass. Black grass. Um, so mm. to have you explain the very simple solution, the problem mm -hmm. isn't the black grass, black grass is a symptom. And yes. the problem is that the soil is bacterial. Mm -hmm. Very bacterial dominated, very so poor we need to calcium. Make, and so we need mm. to make it fungal. Mm -hmm and increase the calcium. Yes, that's the piece we miss is that every problem we're dealing with has already has a solution in nature. Again, the worm is nice and clean, so what did I say that's a sign of? Calcium. Calcium. How do we 
actually invest in farmers to be building the infrastructure for the planet because we're talking about climate change as well. I mean, you can't turn on the news these days without hearing about flooding. Yeah. Right? It's, it's a global problem. This was the other big aha thing for me out of your book. If the soil is healthy and functioning, mm -hmm. that it can absorb 10 times the amount of water. Is that the number? Oh, even more than that. Yeah. If we just turned our farmland back into what it was, which was a huge sponge, yeah. then A, we would deal with the flooding, but mm -hmm. also we would be more resistant to drought. Yeah, which is incredible. You know, and, and I've looked at many soils that maybe absorb an inch and a half of water in an hour, right? Because yeah. they'll s slowly seep it in because that soil's really compacted. Uh, you get that functional and you could be looking at 18 inches in an hour. It's a huge volume of water that mm -hmm. that soil can absorb, mm -hmm. act like a sponge and then slowly release so we don't have the drought at the other end. Yeah. And I, I think there's such a disconnect in, in realizing this is all about soil. Look at the rainbow behind us. We had that incredible rainbow. It was the whole Spencer Farms team out there with you. And oh, I get shivers. Oh, that was so that magical. Was I like to think that it was generations of Spencer farmers looking down upon us happy. I think this whole experience has felt quite magical for me. It's like being in a fairy tale. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's so beautiful, and then there's all of this potential.